Well, it's been a little while since we've had a Collecting Lizzie video. And doing a little spring cleaning uh, last week, I came across some of these wonderful uh, Victorian, late Victorian household encyclopedias. This one. Uh, this one is called The Home Manual. And there are a few others uh, similar. These were often given as a wedding gift to a new bride. And there's everything you'd ever want to know about homemaking recipes, how to nurse the sick. You can see here's a presentation page that you could fill out um, uh, to make this a gift at a, a bridal shower. They're profusely illustrated, often with um, socialite ladies, the uh, wives of presidents, and all kinds of homemaking tips and how to write letters. Um, well, let's take a look at one of the... Here you go. The proper conduct of life. The art of pleasing the true lady and the true gentleman. So if you ever had any doubt on, on uh, how to behave, uh, there are all these useful books um, to help you. What drew my attention, especially as we discuss um, prussic acid and poisons of the time in connection to the Borden case, uh, was would Lizzie have known about household poisons and prussic acid and um, how they would affect the body? Would she have had that kind of knowledge? And surprisingly, uh, yes, that was pretty common knowledge. And I've just turned to a chapter here on poisons. Let's try to get to the home page here. All kinds of poisons. Uh, they were found everywhere. Every Victorian home was a lethal medicine chest of um, things that could kill you. And many people did die of accidental poisoning. Here's the chapter on poisons and antidotes. I like the line drawing, these little steel plate engravings. Um, and, and you'll see there's the herbal sorts of poisonous thing, wolfbane, monk's hood, deadly nightshade, good old hemlock, Strychnine, very common. I actually remember this from when I was a child, and you could get strychnine fairly easily for rats. And this will describe the symptoms and what to do about uh, if someone had been accidentally poisoned. Over here, there's tobacco or nicotine poisoning, even morphine and laudanum belladonna. All of these prescribed medications, if taken in too high a dose, could certainly put you away. Um, then we get to the mineral, what they're calling mineral poisons, phosphorus, the good old arsenic, also called inheritance powder, uh, which was used in a lot of non-lethal uh, preparations. Sometimes ladies would take a pinch of it with their tea to improve the complexion. And then Paris green, which was very, very poisonous. Uh, sometimes uh, used in uh, dyes and wallpaper. And people did die of the fumes from that. Uh, they even knew all about lead poisoning at the time. And that came as a surprise to me, since so much of it was used in, in paint. Uh, iodine poisoning. But what I'm mostly interested in would be this. And this would be hydrocyanic or prussic acid. And here it is, 1889 in the book, cyanide of silver and potassium 
or hydrocyanic acid owe their poisonous qualities to prussic acid, the deadliest poison with which any human being is likely to come into contact. The flavor is a cherry laurel uh, water oil of bitter almonds, and that you might know from Agatha Christie uh, from peach kernels loaded with cyanic uh, acid, cyanide. Um, and their use may be dangerous, it says. It is by no means uncommon to have children made ill by eating peach kernels. Symptoms. In most cases, the poisoning by prussic acid or its salts causes instant collapse and death. Instant collapse and death. So the only thing to be done is to decide the cause by means of the odor of bitter almonds. Small doses of prussic acid cause excessive weakness weakness and nausea and great nervous depression. How do you treat it? Well, it says ammonia, well diluted, followed by oxide of iron should be administered immediately. Then give hot stimulants such as brandy and water. Perfect rest and quiet are needed. So we've just learned a little bit about hydrocyanic uh, or prussic acid. And of course, Eli Bentz would not sell Lizzie prussic acid, um, but we know now it was considered the most lethal and dangerous, and death would have been very, very swift, um, and who knows what would have happened if she had been able to procure it. Uh, this is a bromo caffeine bottle. If you remember the old bromo, um, what's it called, bromo seltzer? For some reason, all was seemed to be um, bottled in cobalt blue bottles. I remember. I think you can still get um, Bromo Seltzer. These I've shown you before. I have several. Um, are from Eli Benz's pharmacy in uh, New Bedford. You see the word Eli Benz. Um, this label is period um, for prussic acid. This is not the original bottle. I've just put the label on the bottle and um, you see the skull and crossbones and to be used only only by or on subscription of a physician so Eli Bentz knew his stuff when he refused to sell Lizzie the prussic acid doesn't quite make sense because prussic acid um, is a light very pale blue or clear liquid. How that would have been applicable to a uh, sealskin fur coat, I don't know. I would think it would have gotten it very wet. But um, the other curious thing, too, I've been pondering lately, and maybe you've got some thoughts on it, is why Dr. Bowen gave Lizzie morphine. It seemed a bit excessive. Bromo caffeine was supposed to have a sort of sedative effect on the nerves, which does make sense. But morphine seems very heavy-handed, and apparently he kept her on that um, for a while. Um, and so I'm, I'm looking a little bit more this week into morphine, properties of morphine, and hoping some of these old books will give me uh, a clue on, on why that would have been uh, prescribed by Dr. Bowen for Lizzie. So that's uh, our talk today on Lizzie Collectibles and Poisons, and we'll see you soon. I think next week we'll be going live in Fall River. Um, I have a few things I think you'll enjoy seeing there, and I will make sure to post in plenty of time. So if you have a chance to join live, it'll be a YouTube live um, video with questions and comments. So we'll see you back here again. I think it'll probably be Tuesday of next week. And hope you have a, a good week ahead. And we'll see you soon.